Ring Daddy, a dad dating simulator. We're still clock chopping it up. We're still good. We're still ready to roll. We're back home. We have met Brian and Max, and we got a look at some other husky, smoky looking dude who I don't know yet. So we're going to get into it. I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass, and I get some good work done. The washer slash dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. Good day's work. Oh, is that the doorbell? Is that my dream dad? First visitor already. I walk over to the door and open it. Which dad is it going to be? Hello? Oh, yes. A handsome, clean cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. You look like a country club kind of guy. You look like a very, yes, welcome. Hello? Excellent. Oh, but you're... Is that Aaron? Excellent. Okay, <laughs> I can't do that voice. It's too deep, so I'm just going to give him the voice that I already gave him. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Jack. That's what my name is. Don't burn up. Oh, God, his voice is so deep. I saw the moving van and thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter Christy wanted to let me wanted me to let you know that she baked them herself. He looks like Jean from Attack on Titan, and that's the voice that he had in the Abridged series. <laughs> Joseph leans in and whispers. Oh. But between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. <laughs> we both share a laugh. Kids, right? Oh. Well, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. <laughs> well, thanks for the cookies. Oh. Amanda disappears with the cookies. That is Aaron's voice, isn't it? Oh. Amanda, come back. And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name's Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. You know what's super tough? Raising them alone. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there must be something wrong with you to raise more than two. I have four kids. What have you done? Oh, uh, I meant... <laughs> Don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh, no. This is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I'm spiraling out of control. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Is the missus around? Mister, actually, and, uh, no, not anymore, he died. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's all right. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. So how about the Red Sox? <laughs> I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but calmly. After a second, I hear a knock at the door, opening it. I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise to not talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm drawing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? Joseph, I say, hippity hop, let's fucking do this. It's a little awkward at first. There's a fly on my monitor. It's a little awkward at first. I mean, we got over some hurdles, we're back at it again. That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly enormous amount of children to have. Don't mind what I said before. That was just me being crazy and testing the water. Four kids is fine. Why not six? I'm talking out. We shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. <laughs> hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to, uh, talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at the church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. <laughs> you look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. Oh, Joseph, see you later, you sexy pink shirt wearing dude. And with that, Joseph's gone. You seem nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. Ah, see? You're already fitting in great. Where those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyway. <laughs> what can I say? I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Joseph probably wants his plate back. Ooh, are we going back in already? Are we taking, are we double dipping? Are we taking a second serving of Mr. Minister? I think so. I think we get a ton of good neighbor points if we bring this back. We're going to be the best neighbors in this, in this whole cul-de-sac. We're going to kick all your neighbors' butts. With kindness. It's the best way to kick them. This fucking shirt is itchy. I'm going to have a nice step outside. Shoot. I'm actually not sure which house it is. Hmm. I'd rather guess it's the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. I already forget the voice I gave Amanda. Goodbye, kid. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. We walk up to the kids and wave. Oi, kids! Oh, God, you're fucking creepy. Jesus, are you Joseph's kids? You look like Joseph. A lot. Hey, guys. Is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. We just wanted to, uh, turn this nice plate. And thank you for the cookies. Jeez, these definitely are Joseph's kids. They all look exactly like him. Well, they were really good. Talk of the town, eh? I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. Is it Christy, Christian, and Chris? I shook them nervously. <laughs> well, okay. We're just gonna set this plate down on the ground real gentle and take and then back away slowly, right, Dad? Right. That's what we're gonna do. Kids eyes pouring into us as we scurry away. I can feel the gaze on my back, even as we approach our house. Stop it! Stop it, you creeps! I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. I need to rest my eyes. Mm. Nap time. Nap time. You've been awake for what? Three hours? And that's three hours too many. Sleepiest warriors? To the pillow zone. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. The, 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 Jack, bro. Oh, yes. I turn around and greeted by a familiar face jogging up on us. He already said bro, so I know exactly what voice I'm giving him. Craig? Oh, you know his name already. The fucking baby is so cute. Bro. Bro. Holy, wow. 
Whoa, I haven't seen Craig in forever. He's handsome. He's so sexy. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, whoa, you look great. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Clean up his act? Are you kidding me? He's fucking ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. He used to be real fun. I mean, real fun. Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, er, hello, and hello, cute baby. Oh, thank you, man. The last time I saw you, you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. Ah! <laughs> he picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. <laughs> Are you babysitting? <laughs> no, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers, and the next we're both fathers. Where you been, man? Nice. <laughs> That's, um, Nate wants the battle's voice. Which is really fucking cool. <laughs> I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding! Man, and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley doing? I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name, not Smashley. Uh, whatever. <laughs> she actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. Oh, dude. So sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. You know, we have River, we have Lake, our other child's name is Pond. It's really good. Twins? You have three kids? <laughs> hey, like something, bro, right? Cake Stand Craig is a father of three. Cake Stand Craig. Cake Stand Craig? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. It was my whole college nickname, dude. He got it because he did a lot of cake stands. Oh, it's Bob <laughs> it's that thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Right. He was very good at it. Oh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily job. I really gotta keep my heart rate up, you know? Gotta burn off those calories, dude. Oh, brought River along for you. Resistance training. She loves it. Loves a little bounce around. And I get added weights. Gets me super shredded. I call it baby shredding instead of babysitting. It's whatever. You jog daily? I jog ugh, yearly. I'm January 1st and I promised myself I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year. I give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. I don't know, man. He's so fucking buff and muscular. He'd probably run twice as fast as I can. Ha! I don't know. Come on, it'll be fun. We can grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We can do a bro brunch. You know, a brooch. Like the good old days. All right, sure. Sounds great. This dude is one handsome bastard. Baby's not too bad either. That's a very cute, very cute, tiny little baby. Great. Let's get that going soon. I better get moving. See you guys, deuces. Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. Just imagine the baby bumps along. Ha! Ah, Bastard, Eddie! <laughs> I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm really mm. like that. The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for um, any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing and he said, I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. He's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. Hmm. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Third tip number 20. Keep your word. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Too bad we're going to be putting myself right back into these boxes in a few months. No! Don't say that. Aw, oh, Dad. It's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know. I know. But Daddy won't. <laughs> it's just, you're my little girl. It's going to be weird to have you around. I'll come visit and I'll text you every day. And I'll take lots of pictures. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Hmm. Oh, of course. Are you going to be okay by your lonesome dad? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. Like get a dog or something. You know, a dog's love is equal to the love of your daughter. Ha, yes, a dog. Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's going to take? <laughs> Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college, a mother darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back to the floor. I also got eyelashes in my eye, so it's like I'm going blind in real time. This is from the Gowan College of Art and Design. Open it! Hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Hmm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. No big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. That's my girl. We have a letter opener, but okay. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, 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 and um, we... Her face drops. I regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Aw, oh, sweetie. It's okay. Kinda saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just wanted to see portraits or whatever. Pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer! I know how much you work and put into your portfolio! The mother school is gonna want to snatch you up for sure! Mm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying mm. that? I'm fine. Really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I forget, Amanda R and uh, uh, Amanda, uh, Emma P and Emma R and uh, Emma PR and Emma PR are sleeping over tonight. So, you need me out of the way because I'm paying for your own cool? <laughs> I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight. So you have the new place to yourself. Yeah? What are your plans? Quick, make plans. Um, I'm secretly the mayor of this town. No, that's not gonna work. Amanda's smart. She's got, she's got her, 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 her brains to rely on. Gotta attend the uni meeting. I'm going clubbing. Clubbing. I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. She's about to get turned. It's about to get real, y'all. All the hottest dance moves. The lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, what all the kids are doing these days. Mm. All right.
sorry, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. Just kidding. I'm actually going to go out and watch. <laughs> I'm gonna go watch the game. Nice. Hmm. Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight, sports ball. Dad. The game on TV. That's somewhere other than here. <laughs> okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna go do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. I'm on the shrubs. Eh, whatever. I would have expected you guys to be up, up to white coat of crime by this point. Okay, maybe money laundering at the least. <laughs> I'm a street rat, Pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? I mean, I'm cool dad, and I'm all for the jokes and cool lingo, but if you're doing drugs, I'm highly concerned. <sighs> yes, dad. Ugh. Just making sure. I'll give her a pat in the head. There you go. Go fuck those feathers. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? Uh, of course I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> no, making fun of sports is played out. <laughs> all right, then. I'll do some white cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, I'm on the subscreen. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. That's a cool name. Yep, totally remember. I'll be there. Don't even worry. Pet every dog. That's a fucking great detective. Pet every single dog. Okay, I wonder what dad we're gonna run into next. There's a few left. I think there's like three. Wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go, uh, this way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? Yeah, Jim and Kim's. A big, burned out neon sign hangs up above the tiny bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? Alright, it'll do. I've been in worse places. The bar, the bar is small and dimly lit, but at least it's fucking lit, fam. The crack of pool ball sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. Put up a seat at the bar. One be One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. Bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh, I often turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. I'll tell have it. My team is preference. Is my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. <laughs> the brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite, my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Pick a side, man. Pick one. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike. Although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, a passion for their team is all in good fun. Hey, hey. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Human, ah. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. Oh, no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Jack, by the way. Mm. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. And also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Do you get it? Getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh, hey. Buy a gal a drink? Uh, mm. I want to buy you a drink, but that might make you linger around longer. And I'm not really into you. You know, mid dudes? Don't buy Mary a drink. I don't want to be a gentleman, but I don't want to give the wrong impression. Don't buy Mary a drink. Uh, maybe some other time? Suit yourself, Sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar of patrons to enter. Yeah, see? She's just hopping from man to man in the bar, hoping to get free beers. Happy to watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points. A little too close, that's what I'm comfortable with. A little too close, I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player throws, scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. <laughs> Go, team. Oh, it's the sexy slice from before. It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? Shit, I haven't got a sound for his voice yet. I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my, te in my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. Take that. That's where you're wrong. Since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we go back, go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The team is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. Take that, Mr. Glasses, sexy beard. I raise a respectful glass to the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender, who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. Cold, cool. Smooth. The name's Robert. Thanks. Hi, Jack. Oh, this is Danny's character. Hey. Okay, I can't do that for you. I probably can't even do this voice for very long. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you. Yeah. <laughs> Robert chuckles. <laughs> that voice doesn't really suit him. <laughs> She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Oh! <laughs> Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Oh, okay. Can I call you Bob? Bobby? Bobbert? <sighs> you a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I drink most things. Anything that's got alcohol in it. Anything that gets me fucked up and lets me forget about my life. That's good for me. <sighs> you like shots? I love shots. Shots, 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 shots. Ooh, shots fired. I don't like them. <laughs> I love shots. Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Hey, here's your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. You know what? I think it's time for a shot of whiskey in real life. Let's do this! Also, flamingo shorts. Flamingo shorts and crop top. I'm a dad. I got shots. I got shots real good. Well, it's a, a half shot because I don't want to do too much whiskey because it'll fuck up my neck. Okay. Uh, uh, we take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that in real life. Oh, yeah. I drink this all the time. Oh, uh, character acting. <laughs> 
making friends is. Oh wait, no, that's just the voice. <laughs> okay, chat, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Day him up, Mr. Bartender's trying to make some friends. Compliment his cool leather jacket. That is a fucking sweet, tasty leather one. Compliment his rugged good looks. Hmm, might be a bit too forward. You might get the wrong impression. Make friends first, and then make fuck buddies later. Um, compliment his hand tattoo. Yeah, this one. I like your tattoo. Oh, it's me. Oh shit, I picked the wrong one. Fucking the devil came out behind him. It's a reminder. I wait for him to elaborate, but it seems like he's done talking. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Uh, my daughter kicked me out of the house, running from my problems, trying to make friends. My daughter kicked me out of the house? Not like forever. She was having a sleepover with her friends. Family type, huh? Single dad? Hmm. He gets up. Hey, <laughs> be right back. Got a powder my nose. Does that mean you're gonna do cocaine? <laughs> Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks that I'm cool, then I really must be. Pull your shit together, Jack. You're in the cool club now. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? I don't know. Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. Uh, yes, we are. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Fucking hell, it's the best town ever. A whole town of dads. A whole big old play place of boys. Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Uh, great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Sometimes they come up and I have to say, get off my lawn. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Jack, but I do fucking talk. <laughs> so, are we doing this or what? What? You know, you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. <laughs> Robert, he is fucking hot. I'd fuck him. Um, I don't know. We didn't have Brian. Uh, the more I talked to him, the more he's bragging about his child, the less I liked him. He was, he was a bit of a wad hopper. I'm not kidding into that. But this dude seems to have some jack brooding problems. Maybe he's fucking Dracula inside him or something. Uh, lay it on smooth. Hey, you know me, baby. Well, I don't see why not. That sounded smoother in my head. Let's do it. Or, wait, are you talking about actually doing it? Oh, God. Hey, this is it, y'all. Like a fucking dad. I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leaving me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. It's getting hot. It's, it's, it's getting hot. Is it just me? Oh, come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs into what I assume is his bedroom. But it's so dark, I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. What a fucking dad. He kisses me, and again, I can hear him shucking off his jacket. Clumsily, I take off mine, too. His hands roam down my chest. And suddenly, he's tugging at my belt. I, I, uh, I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? I don't know. I don't know. What do I do, people? I think it's too early on in the game to be fucking a dad already. But on the other hand, hell yeah! What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I haven't even met all the dads yet. Should I stop? Because I don't, I don't know how the game works. I don't want to fuck this dad. And then all of a sudden, like, be out of luck with any of the others. Can I be with all the dads? That's, that's the real option. That's the one I kind of want to be with. Get off me, mosquitoes. Motherfuckers. Um, we stop it for now. I'm a young, nubile boy. I can't take so much at once. What would Amanda think of me? I'm drunk. Am I? I don't know. Am I talking to myself? Am I saying all this out loud? Actually, I should probably get going. Robert steps back. All right. I think I'm going to head home. Sorry. Nah, it's cool. <laughs> you just give me a serious case of blue balls, that's all. I head home. My head's still sp spinning with the anxiety of turning Robert down. The sight of the couch helps me compartmentalize. Though, before, I know when I'm having dreams about my teeth falling out. That's fucked up. Seems important. <laughs> Fuck! Jesus Christ, give me a heart attack. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. <laughs> Rise and shine, early bird. Still want to work out? This is Greg, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Shit, fuck! Whoops, must have winked back out. I'll check my phone again. Hey, bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Hmm, sleep is for the weak. And gym is for the swole! <laughs> hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up. But let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, my dude, meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket and... Hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep on a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. <laughs> ah, it's a fucking rough night. Gotta get back to the zoo. The neighborhood is quiet and serene. This early in the morning, birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching. Of course, he spots me and waves enthusiastically. <laughs> hey, bro, don't got my little baby on my chest today, cause it's time to get my fucking swole on, dude. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, my man. I'm definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. You ready to kick some butt, bro? Gotta say, pausey, my dude. Oh, chod, eh? Fucking sod, eh? Tenses. With your help, I am. I get the feeling this is gonna be less of me kicking butt and more the gym kicking my fucking ass. I can handle it with you here. <laughs> dude, bro, that means a lot. Dude. We head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. Are you talking in a sexual way? And it seems like Craig is friends with all of them. He high fives. What fives all down? And finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. He looks like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay. I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be. Walking. So, I don't run treadmills. Yeah. And those over there are ellipticals? <laughs> Very good. What is all this other stuff? <laughs> they might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them 
serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in a muscle tee flexes a muscle. In a muscle tee flexes a muscle. Is it this one? Is it that one? I don't even know the muscle he flexes. They didn't even know mankind has muscles that could flex like that. They didn't know it existed on a machine that I think was once used to process grain into flour. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Trying to crush people's skulls with his thighs? I don't know. I think I got blackout. Using my evil torture device? Praying some sort of pain? <laughs> it's like a, a religious self flagellation? Men to atone for one's sins? Craig, do you see spots? <laughs> You're actually not far off from the truth. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. How long have you been doing the boss thing? Nice. <laughs> a couple years. Uh, well, what do you know? What do you do when you're not dining? Or working or buffing? <laughs> oh, I coach the twin softball team. That still counts as both dining and buffing. Fuck! Uh, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? Of course, I do a sick cake stand and get everyone cheering. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic. So you run out to me post cake stand with a dry, dirty fish in your hands that you scooped off the ground and you're yelling at me like we have to leave. So we're running out of a frat party with a fish and then trying to give it mouth to mouth resuscitation. Ah, rookie mistake, dude. You gotta give those fish to mouth to kill resuscitation, man. And we get him home, we get him into a bowl of water, but the prognosis is grim, dude. Catch the great fish thieves of Grand Range, you! Have they never? Well, I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall! Fucking Jesus, that hurt! Hey! Dude, bro! Are you okay? Craig offers me a big, strong, muscular hand with the grip strength of an ox and looks me over for injuries. He looks first at my crotch and then my pecs. And. Fantastic! I'm gonna sign up and rub my back! Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits, dudes. Huh? I think I might call your gym venture here! Mm-hmm. You sure? Yeah! I said, see spots! Mm. Oh, fuck! Alright, dude, well, here. I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stir it with what must be apparent distaste. It's septic protein, dude. Mm-hmm. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh, boy. Here goes. Oh, it tastes so good. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Yeah, most protein shakes are. They're designed to be good to drink. Wow, this is really good. I'm <laughs> good for you, my dude. It's a special recipe. Pretty proud of it. It's grind up bones of children. But don't tell anyone. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your uh, speed. Oh, God, it's dad's making dad jokes. Also, the name of the game is Dream Dad, the dad dating simulator. D D A D D S. The name of the game spells dads. The name of the game is a dad joke. No pun intended, bro. Good one. Huh? I'm going to go put some ice on this, uh, everything. See you around. I need the gym feeling ashamed. Ah, oh, God. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really got to work on this dad bod. But we look fucking great. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh, God, I'm so old. Uh, Okay. Oh no. I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Well, it's time to leave this episode here. I'm glad you asked, Jack. That was a fucking uproarious adventure. We went out. We got drinks. We we talked to some dads. We met three new dads. Joseph, Craig, and Robert. Robert almost got the one over on me. But it's soon. It's too soon. It's too soon after moving to a new neighborhood. My life is spiraling out of control. I don't want to rush into anything too quick. I'm hungover. I'm sore. I'm tired. I should have sleep. <laughs> Why? Why are you guys? So much watching this uh, episode of Dads. If you liked it, punch that like button in the face. Hello, you dad. And I face a row. Crush. Crush.